So this is what a casual 1.5 terabytes of RAM looks like. Insanity. With that, I'm excited to throw it in the Mac Pro, put it through its paces, everything from making a ridiculously fast RAM disk, loading virtual instruments in Logic Pro. But first, I think it's only fair if we put a head-to-head -head against Chrome. We're gonna run out of RAM. So I'm currently in a head-to-head -head standoff with Google Chrome right now and things aren't looking super hot. 6,000 tabs later, yes, 6,000 tabs and they're real websites, not just apple.com or 6,000 blank Chrome tabs. These are real websites. The crazier figure though is Chrome is currently using 1,429 gigs of RAM, over a terabyte, but the thing is it's rapidly climbing so I'm a little concerned that this might run out of RAM and Chrome may take this Mac Pro to its knees. First off, having 1.5 terabytes of RAM in your computer is crazy. You head over to the About This Mac tab and you see that amount of RAM, it just does not quite compute up here because those are usually storage numbers. So huge thanks to OWC for letting me borrow this and going crazy with it. If you picked up a Mac Pro, you're looking to upgrade. They have a ton of options. More importantly, you're gonna save a ton of cash as opposed to going directly through Apple. I'll drop a link to that down below, but in terms of RAM, especially with the 2019 Mac Pro, super simple upgrade, pop the case off, take the old RAM out, put the new RAM in, and minutes later, you are knee deep in Chrome tabs. Now, as far as how I got here, it's a little bit crazy, and we are now at 1,435 gigs of RAM. Again, rapidly approaching the system's max amount. The RAM is climbing rapidly and somehow Mac OS is just able to hop between Safari. I got Tidal open, taking up a gig of RAM. I got Final Cut in the background, which doesn't make sense as well. These cores are slammed. Chrome is currently mid beach ball right now. And I guess the fact that it hasn't crashed is impressive in itself, but one of two things are gonna happen right now. Either it catches up or like I said, we run out of RAM and we are nearing 1,450. Now the idea of launching this many Chrome tabs one by one sounds like a mind numbing experience. I also wanted to take it one step further and not just launch blank Chrome tabs. So what I did was create a script in Automator. You wanna head over to internet and then get specified URLs. From there, I entered 50 legitimate real websites, repeated that 20 times. The end result is 1,000 tabs, but the icing on the cake is a script that I found that points everything to Chrome. I'll link that down below, but the end result is one-click madness. That honestly was surprisingly smooth. You could tab through the different websites one by one, no problems. The CPU usage wasn't too insane. As you start to add more and more, 2,000, 3,000, things get a little more intense. Fast forward to 5,000 tabs, which I got to last night. I kind of felt like that was going to be the max amount of tabs and surprisingly, not because of RAM, but the actual CPU, which was just spiked across the board. RAM usage was around two, 300 gigs, which is insane in itself, I realized that, but I was super close to just closing Chrome and going back at it this morning. But for whatever reason, I thought, what if I let this run all night? So I walk in this morning, every core, every thread just slammed on fire and the RAM was now loaded up to 800 gigs. So I was just like, what is going on? There are so many layers to this, and what's maybe most impressive to me is one, the stability of macOS. The fact that this entire system has not crashed yet is mind-blowing. If we head over here to the CPU section, this has been running solid for 22 hours and 44 minutes currently without a crash. The other kind of cool thing is this system, again, has been slammed for nearly 24 hours straight, but it's consistently turboed above three gigahertz. And again, the base clock on this machine is 2.5. So for those who were calling thermal throttling, Hardware Canucks, shh, 1,460 gigs is rapidly approaching. So again, one of two things are gonna happen. If we head over to Activity Monitor and we'll go over to Memory, it's actually showing that 1.49 terabytes is being used right now. So I have no idea when the system is gonna cave in the hope of potentially bringing Chrome back right now. If we go over to this tab, you can see there's a ton of Chrome instances, but there's one bad app right here. So I'm not sure if this just completely pulls the plug on everything, or maybe it brings Chrome back to a usable state. 
Are you sure you want to quit this process? Do you really want to quit Google Chrome? So that didn't work, so we'll try force quit. So that actually just wiped out Chrome completely. You can see we got 1.4 terabytes of RAM back in usage. I'm not sure if Chrome will remember all those tabs. We will see just in case. Chrome didn't shut down correctly. Restore pages. <laughs> so clearly that did not work, but I would say comfortably I got up to 5,000 tabs where I can go just back and forth tabbing between those websites. Once I got up to 6,000 though, that's where problems started to arise and it was just sending that RAM usage through the roof. It would be interesting though to see how Chrome stacks up against Firefox or Safari. So if you wanna see maybe this repeated with a head-to-head -head showdown with those, drop a like down below. So the other ridiculous thing you can do with this much RAM is create a super fast RAM disk. To do this in Catalina, there's a really simple automator script from MeTechie that I'll link to down below, where once you calculate the space needed, it essentially turns it into what macOS sees as an application, where again, you can launch with one click. In this case, I created a one terabyte disk out of RAM and copied an entire Final Cut Pro 10 library to run off RAM. Weirdly enough, with this Mac Pro, the biggest bottleneck for the 16K project I loaded up wasn't the CPU, wasn't the graphics card, wasn't the RAM, it was storage. The project reads at nearly 3000 megabytes per second, which essentially maxes out the speed of the internal storage, which is nuts in itself. So with that extra headroom on the RAM disk, the project surprisingly ran even smoother than before. As impressive as that is though, it's not really a practical use case because one, once you shut the computer down, that RAM disk is gone, and two, fast storage is getting cheaper and cheaper. Where that RAM actually makes sense though is with music, specifically scoring. Spitfire Audio is a company that takes some of the world's best composers, musicians, engineers, and turns those recordings into insane sample libraries that you can then load into your DAW. I got a chance to hang out with Kari Mateen, a super talented musician and composer, and seeing him get lost in the creation part without anything in the way was incredible. Horns right there. These libraries can sometimes jump into the hundreds of gigabytes each, so imagine having to load those every single time you wanted to audition a sound. The more RAM you have, the more of those libraries you can load into RAM where you essentially have instant access. Think about picking up a guitar or a violin. There's no waiting for sounds to load, it just works. And that's the foundation of the idea here. It just allows you to create. Everything's slow and easy. I can just like compose and just just react to what's happening on screen. Just the note, like I just can't do this on my um, on my computer right now. So point being, us mere mortals probably don't need 1.5 terabytes of RAM. Without a doubt though, there is a benefit to adding more. And if you're gonna do so, you will absolutely save some money if you do it yourself. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Jonathan and I will catch you guys later.